There's just a breakdown in their communications. <laughs> Ever wonder what old Hollywood was hiding in the shadows? You'd think these scandals would be buried in history, but guess what? We're about to expose the most shocking forgotten secrets of the classic Hollywood era. Did you notice anything uh, like that, that sort of reception? No. Number 20, the death of Natalie Wood. The year was 1981, and the world was rocked by the mysterious death of Hollywood icon Natalie Wood. This scandal remains one of Tinseltown's greatest enigmas, shrouded in secrets and unanswered questions. Picture this, a fateful boat ride featuring Natalie, her actor husband Robert Wagner, twice her age, mind you, having tied the knot in both 1957 and 1972, and fellow actor Christopher Walken, with whom rumors of a possible affair circulated. Tragically, the boat journey took a sinister turn, resulting in Natalie Wood's untimely death at the tender age of 43. The circumstances surrounding her drowning are as murky as the deep blue sea that claimed her. Initially deemed an accidental drowning, the case took a chilling twist in 2011 when the boat captain alleged Wagner's involvement. However, despite the sensational revelations, no charges were laid and the case eventually went cold. Fast forward to 2012, when a haunting amendment was made to Wood's death certificate, officially listing the cause as drowning and other undetermined factors. What truly happened to Natalie Wood on that tragic night? And why does the truth remain so elusive? Number 19, Roman Polanski's secret. Now, if we thought Hollywood scandals couldn't get any darker, enter Roman Polanski, whose life reads like a script from a chilling thriller. The tale begins with the tragic murder of his second wife, actress Sharon Tate, by the Manson family in 1969, an event that sent shockwaves through Hollywood and beyond, even inspiring the star-studded film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in 2019. However, the rabbit hole deepens in 1977 when Polanski becomes entangled in a sordid saga involving a statutory rape of a 13-year-old girl whom he allegedly plied with drugs. Now, brace yourself for the bizarre twist Polanski, despite admitting to a relationship with the underage girl, vehemently insisted that she was a willing participant in the affair. Unsurprisingly, this explanation raised eyebrows, with few buying into such a troubling narrative. As the legal storm loomed, Polanski faced an imminent sentencing in February 1978. But wait for the plot twist. Instead of facing the consequences, he pulled off a daring escape to Europe, leaving behind a trail of questions and controversy. Since then, numerous extradition attempts have been made, the latest in 2015, yet Polanski remains elusive. The saga endures, casting a long and disturbing shadow over the director's career. Looking into this scandal, we're left pondering, how many more stories are waiting to be unearthed? And what does the future hold for those whose lives play out on the grand stage of celebrity? Number 18, Robert Mitchum's Jail Time. Now. Let's rewind to a time when the mere whiff of marijuana was enough to tarnish a Hollywood career. It's 1948, and Robert Mitchum, the iconic face of classics like Cape Fear and The Night of the Hunter, finds himself at the center of a scandal that would make headlines and set tongues wagging for decades. In an era where marijuana was branded as a gateway drug, the authorities were on a mission to make an example, and Mitchum became their unwitting target. The stage for this drama unfolds at the residence of actress Lila Leeds, where Mitchum, along with a group of friends, is caught red-handed puffing on a joint. The police, having surveilled Leeds' home for weeks, chose the perfect moment to conduct a raid, casting a shadow over Mitchum's illustrious career. The verdict? A one-year jail sentence for the Hollywood star. However, fate took an unexpected turn, and Mitchum ended up serving two months on a prison farm with probation. Now, one might think this would be a career-ender, a stain that couldn't easily be washed away. But here's the twist. The public's reaction was surprisingly indifferent. Smoking a bit of the green stuff didn't deter Mitchum's fans, and he seamlessly continued his acting journey, making his mark on Hollywood until his passing in 1997. Number 17, Jerry Lee Lewis married his cousin. Let's move to the scandalous chords of the rock era, where the great balls of fire singer Jerry Lee Lewis thrust himself into the limelight in a way that would be forever remembered for controversy. In the heady days of 1958, Jerry Lee Lewis did something that transcended the norms, even by the standards of an industry known for its audacious exploits. 
he walked down the aisle with his 13-year-old cousin, Myra Gale Brown. Now, while Hollywood is no stranger to unconventional unions, the jaw-dropping 22-year age gap between the newlyweds sent shockwaves through an industry that prided itself on pushing boundaries. The scandalous marriage became a haunting backdrop to Lewis's career, overshadowing his title as the supposed savior of rock and roll. The public, unable to shake off the unease, couldn't get past the fact that Lewis had wed a child and the fallout was swift. The glory days seemed to slip away as his career took a hit that resonated for years to come. Yet, within this tumultuous storm of public scrutiny, a unique bond unfolded. Myra Gale Brown, the center of the storm, reflects on the aftermath. It was something that marked Jerry for life. We kept thinking every year, every six months, this was going to go away. They're going to stop talking about it, and it didn't just happen. But it brought me and Jerry very close, and we had 10 incredible, wonderful years together after that. Number 16. Charlie Chaplin Liked Young Girls Now, let's step into the enigmatic world of Charlie Chaplin, a cinematic legend whose influence on the industry is unparalleled. While many celebrate his silent films for propelling cinema into the mainstream, there's a shadowy side to Chaplin's life that often goes unnoticed. A self-proclaimed ladies' man, Chaplin boasted of his conquests claiming to have slept with an astounding 2,000 women. However, what raises eyebrows is his penchant for pursuing relationships with younger women, a facet of his life that remains shrouded in controversy. At the age of 26, as Chaplin ascended to stardom, he embarked on a journey of romance with women significantly younger than him. His first high-profile affair was with 19-year-old actress Edna Purviance. While this might seem relatively innocuous, the pattern took a more unsettling turn as he set his sights on 16-year-old child actress Mildred Harris. Their union, marked by a false pregnancy alarm, swiftly ended in divorce. The chronicle of Chaplin's romantic escapades continues with his involvement with 15-year-old actress Lita Gray. Their relationship culminated in marriage, pregnancy, and a subsequent divorce. The cycle persisted with Chaplin well into his 40s, engaging with actress Paulette Goddard at least of age 22, but still raising eyebrows given the age difference. Amidst this whirlwind of relationships, Chaplin's controlling and narcissistic tendencies became apparent. His attitude towards women appeared disposable, a means to fulfill his desires and ambitions. Eventually, at the age of 54, Chaplin encountered 18-year-old Una O'Neill, daughter of American playwright Eugene O'Neill. This meeting led to his fourth marriage, and the couple went on to have eight children together. While some may attempt to portray Chaplin as a carefree individual, enjoying life before finding true love, the reality suggests a more complex narrative. Behind the laughter and iconic Tramp character, Chaplin was a man driven by personal ambition, viewing relationships through a lens of disposability. Even in his later years of marital stability with Una, dynamics were marked by what Joan Collins described as an almost geisha-like deference. Number 15. Powerful Studios as the glamour of Hollywood exploded onto the scene in the 1930s and 40s, it brought with it a series of bombshells that both captivated moviegoers and sent shockwaves through conservative circles. However, behind the scenes, the studios were engaged in a delicate dance between capitalizing on the publicity these women generated and maintaining a carefully crafted image of their stars. While the studios reveled in the attention these leading ladies garnered, they were equally invested in presenting them as respectable women, untouched by scandal or any form of unlawful activities. Maintaining this image was paramount for the longevity of their stardom. When the unavoidable happened and top stars found themselves expecting, the studios faced a dilemma. To safeguard the careers of their prized actresses, studios took a controversial step, advising them to undergo abortions. In some instances, the studios went even further, actively arranging for their procedures. The process was shrouded in secrecy, with actresses being admitted to hospitals under various pretexts, such as an ear infection or merely needing some rest. Perhaps even more startling is the revelation that, at times, parents of child actors were complicit in these forced abortions. Take, for instance, Judy Garland's mother, collaborating with the studio to arrange an abortion during Garland's marriage to David Rose. This practice wasn't limited to a few isolated cases. Icons like Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, Judy Garland, Rita Hayworth, Jean Harlow, and Lana Turner, among others, 
found themselves persuaded to undergo abortions to safeguard their film careers. The orchestration of these events was a well-kept secret, with studios working diligently to keep them out of the spotlight. Number 14. Superman's Kryptonite George Reeves, the Hollywood star immortalized as Superman, but a tragic end that echoed the superhero's vulnerability despite his invincible facade. In 1959, at the age of 45, Reeves was discovered lifeless in his Hollywood home, a single gunshot wound to his head. Authorities swiftly deemed it a suicide, but the investigation revealed a series of perplexing details that fueled speculation and conspiracy theories. Forensic examinations unveiled an absence of Reeves' fingerprints on the gun, the discrepancy between three shots fired and witnesses hearing only one, and unexplained bruising around Reeves' head and neck. One intriguing aspect of Reeves' life was his affair with Tony Mannix, the wife of MGM Vice President Eddie Mannix. This liaison added a layer of complexity to the investigation, as Eddie Mannix was rumored to have connections to the Mafia. Conspiracy theorists proposed an alternative narrative, that Reeves might have been murdered, with suspicions pointing toward Mannix orchestrating the hit due to the affair. Was it a tragic end or a carefully orchestrated conspiracy? Number 13. Deathly Love Affair Jean Harlow, the original blonde bombshell predating Marilyn Monroe, found herself thrust into a scandal that rippled through the very heart of Hollywood. Her marriage to MGM studio executive Paul Byrne took a tragic turn when Byrne was discovered lifeless, a fatal gunshot wound echoing through their home accompanied by a cryptic suicide note. The studio wasted no time branding it as a suicide, but the lingering whispers of murder refused to fade away, leaving behind an air of unsettling uncertainty. In a town where secrets were as plentiful as stars in the sky, theories sprouted like wild mushrooms in a damp forest. Did the enigmatic butler play a role, or was it perhaps Burns' rumored common-law wife pulling the strings? While Jean Harlow's career managed to weather the storm, the circumstances surrounding Byrne's death have endured as a murky tale, perpetually draped in shadows and mystery. Number 12. The Troubles of Oz While the Wizard of Oz enchanted audiences with its on-screen magic, the real-life story of its young star, Judy Garland, unfolded as a harrowing tale of exploitation and despair. From relentless criticism about her appearance to a cocktail of pills meant to control her weight and maintain marathon shooting hours, Garland's journey behind the Emerald Curtain was far from the fantastical world she portrayed. Spotted by an MGM scout in 1935 as a young teen, Garland's talent was overshadowed by the studio's dissatisfaction with her looks. Signed on the spot, she embarked on a grueling schedule, working six days a week for up to 18 hours a day. The studio's solution to keeping her energized and slender was a dubious mix of amphetamines to stay awake and sleeping pills to wind down setting the stage for a lifetime of substance abuse and personal struggles. Against the studio's wishes, Garland married at 19, only to be ordered back to a work a mere 24 hours after her wedding. When pregnancy entered the picture, the studio swiftly arranged for her to undergo an abortion. As she entered her 20s, Garland's reliance on amphetamines deepened and the studio, in an attempt to protect her, isolated her from others. Sick days were met with financial repercussions deducted from her paycheck. Despite a brief stint in a hospital aimed at restoring her health, the studio's relentless pressure forced her back onto pills. As Garland's life careened out of control, the same studios that had profited from her talent abandoned her. The tragic crescendo came in 1969 when she succumbed to a barbiturate overdose at the age of 47, marking the end of a troubled journey down the yellow brick road. Number 11. William Randolph Hearst Tried to Shoot Charlie Chaplin in the glamorous yet treacherous landscape of Hollywood's golden age, scandalous affairs were often concealed behind a veneer of glitz and glamour. One such affair, involving media mogul William Randolph Hearst, took a deadly turn, with rumors of a gunshot and a suspicious death lingering in the air. Hearst, a formidable figure with the largest newspaper business globally and a reputation for ruthlessness, discovered that his mistress, Marion Davies, was allegedly involved with none other than the legendary Charlie Chaplin. Rather than opting for a direct confrontation, Hearst orchestrated an uneasy gathering on his yacht, inviting Chaplin and other film personalities. Among the guests was Thomas Ince, a Hollywood producer specializing in Western films. Struggling with a declining studio, Ince saw an opportunity for investment and joined the ill-fated voyage. What followed 
was a twisted tale of events leading to Ince's demise. Officially, Ince's death was attributed to sudden digestive problems, with a swift hospitalization unable to save him. Adding to the mystery, Ince's body was promptly cremated, raising eyebrows and fueling speculation. Despite Hearst's efforts to control the narrative through his influential newspapers, whispers emerged suggesting a more sinister turn of events. Rumors circulated that Hearst, in a fit of jealous rage, had aimed a gunshot at Chaplin, but tragically struck Ince instead. The Los Angeles Times initially ran a headline proclaiming, Movie producer shot on Hearst yacht, only to retract it in subsequent editions under mysterious circumstances. A secretary aboard the yacht claimed to have witnessed Ince bleeding from a bullet wound to the head, contradicting the official narrative. Adding to the intrigue, Ince's wife embarked on a sudden European tour, making her unavailable for comment. Number 10. Tallulah Bankhead's Multiple Abortions in Hollywood's golden age, we encounter the magnetic and infamous Tallulah Bankhead. Revered for her beauty worldwide, she was equally notorious within Hollywood circles for her amorous escapades, amassing a staggering 185 notches on her bedpost. And she wasn't done counting. In an industry where the image was paramount, especially for female stars, Bankhead found herself facing a predicament. Fully aware that a pregnant actress wouldn't align with the studio standards, she made a series of difficult choices. By the age of 30, Bankhead had undergone four abortions. However, her story is not unique. Hollywood had established discrete protocols for such contingencies. Studios, understanding the potential backlash of a pregnant star, discreetly booked women into hospitals under false names. These women underwent vague procedures attended only by studio-approved doctors with visitors strictly prohibited. It was a clandestine dance orchestrated to protect the public image of the stars. Bankhead, notorious for her unconventional lifestyle, was a regular visitor to these secret hospitals. Her promiscuity was legendary, engaging in affairs with both men and women, often in semi-public spaces. Notorious for her boldness, she reportedly even flashed the audience during a Broadway play, prompting a priest and three nuns to walk out in scandalized disapproval. Her unconventional approach to relationships extended beyond the bedroom. She was briefly married to a man whose proposal she accepted simply because, as she put it, he's the only one who ever asked me. Predictably, the marriage was short-lived. Regret, however, would later cast a shadow over Bankhead's audacious choices. As she aged, she found herself unable to bear children due to a hysterectomy, a consequence of contracting gonorrhea. The very abortions that once seemed a pragmatic solution haunted her as she confronted the harsh reality of infertility. Number 9. Walt Disney's Connections In the intricate tapestry of Hollywood's history, certain threads remain enigmatic, weaving tales of unexpected connections and controversial encounters. One such chapter revolves around the iconic Walt Disney, a man whose legacy is synonymous with magic and imagination. However, beyond the realms of animation, a shadowy episode emerges raising questions about Disney's interactions during a tumultuous period in history. The late 1930s witnessed the ominous rise of Adolf Hitler and the unsettling power of Nazi propaganda, encapsulated in the works of filmmaker Leni Riefenstahl. Known for her chilling portrayal of Nazi rallies in Triumph of the Will and her capturing of the 1936 Berlin Olympics in Olympia, Riefenstahl sought validation in Hollywood in 1938. As the world grappled with the aftermath of Kristallnacht, a nightmarish event where Jewish institutions were ravaged, synagogues burned, and businesses destroyed, Reifenstahl arrived in Hollywood. However, her timing couldn't have been worse. The anti-Nazi film I Was a Captive of Nazi Germany was already in production, and her association with Hitler's regime through Triumph of the Will preceded her. Amidst this charged atmosphere, Walt Disney, an influential studio head, extended an unexpected welcome to Reifenstahl. He showcased early sketches from the upcoming Fantasia and arranged a screening of her documentary Olympia. The media speculated on the nature of their meeting, with reports portraying Reifenstahl as an object of Hitler's admiration. However, the warmth Reifenstahl initially experienced in America quickly turned icy. Kristallnacht had unfolded, leaving nearly 100 German Jews dead and numerous Jewish properties in ruins. As Reifenstahl encountered the golden gates of Hollywood, they seemed firmly shut. Walt Disney, alongside gossip columnist Hedda Hopper, was among the few who agreed to meet with her. 
Yet, Disney's stance took an unexpected turn. Despite Hopper's support, Disney refused to screen or promote Olympia. Reifenstahl, sensing the sudden change, expressed her frustration and pointedly remarked, I was received warmly all over America, with the exception of the Hollywood cinema industry, directed by Jews or members of anti-German leagues, where I was given a hostile reception. The repercussions of this encounter echo through history. Nazi Germany, fueled by a murderous ideology, soon embarked on a devastating crusade. In retrospect, the decision by many in Hollywood, including Disney, to distance themselves from one of the regime's top propagandists stands as a noteworthy testament to the industry's moral choices in the face of looming darkness. Number 8. Errol Flynn Trial Back in the early 1900s, Errol Flynn was a handsome, swashbuckling charmer. Known for his roles as Robin Hood and other heroes, his persona couldn't have been more dashing. But now, we know a little better. Flynn was accused of assault by two teens in 1942. While Flynn was eventually found not guilty, things only progressed from there. The son of L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, later claimed that Flynn and his father both engaged in activity with underage girls. He also reportedly had a relationship with Beverly Adland, who was 15 when the romance began. Actor Errol Flynn had a two-year affair with Beverly Adland starting when she was 15. At the time of the affair, Flynn had already been accused and found not guilty of the statutory rape of two underage girls in 1942. I was scared, Adlin wrote in People. He was just too strong for me. I cried. At one point, he tore my dress. Then he carried me off to another room and I was still carrying on. What was going through my head was, what was I going to tell my mother? Number 7. Lana Turner's Hero In the smoky haze of the 1940s and 50s film noir, Lana Turner emerged as an unforgettable femme fatale forever associated with her performance in The Postman Always Rings Twice. Yet, the shadows of her real life proved equally dark, weaving a tale that mirrored the intrigue of the silver screen. In the late 1950s, Turner found herself entangled with Johnny Stampanato, a name synonymous with the mob and connections to none other than Mickey Cohen. When Turner discovered Stampanato's criminal associations, she attempted to sever ties, triggering a tumultuous year of physical and emotional abuse at the hands of the gangster. The narrative takes a grisly turn during a violent altercation when Turner's teenage daughter, Cheryl, becomes her mother's unexpected hero. In a desperate bid to protect Turner from Stampanato's wrath, Cheryl takes a drastic step. She stabs and kills the mobster. The subsequent legal proceedings deemed the killing justifiable, but the scandal that erupted was nothing short of cinematic. In 1958, the glitzy facade of Hollywood shattered as Johnny Stampanato lay dead a victim of a fatal encounter in Lana Turner's home. The coroner's inquest brought forth Mickey Cohen as a witness, adding another layer of intrigue to the already sensational tale. Turner herself took the stand, recounting the events of that fateful night where a butcher knife became an unlikely instrument of defense. The jury's verdict of justifiable homicide did little to quell the storm of rumors that ensued. Speculation swirled, suggesting motives ranging from Crane's supposed romantic entanglement with Stampanato to accusations that Turner orchestrated the demise and coerced her daughter into shouldering the blame. Number 6. The Real Gangster In the gritty world of Hollywood's gangster flicks, George Raft wasn't just another tough guy on the screen. He was a real-life player in the shadowy realm of mobsters and crime. Cast repeatedly as convicts, crooks, and mobsters, Raft's on-screen persona mirrored his off-screen associations, creating a narrative that blurred the lines between fiction and reality. It all began with his debut role as a coin-tossing henchman in Scarface, setting the tone for a career that seemed influenced by more than just acting. Raft's ties to the mafia ran deep, with lifelong connections to notorious figures like Oni Madden and Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Raised in the tough streets of Hell's Kitchen in New York, Raft's introduction to the world of crime came courtesy of his best friend Bugsy Siegel, who taught him the art of coin flipping. Confessions from Raft himself revealed his involvement in running bootleg liquor operations for the mob, providing a glimpse into a life where the line between reality and the roles he portrayed became increasingly thin. Siegel, a mobster with connections in the film industry, played a pivotal role in Raft's entry into Hollywood. The Mafia's influence extended beyond personal connections. Al Capone himself made a cameo in Raft's life, offering insights into the criminal world by personally demonstrating how to fire a Tommy gun. Number 5. Not 
your ordinary director. Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense, was more than just a brilliant director. He was a man of peculiarities that stretched beyond the confines of his cinematic creations. Married for 54 years, Hitchcock claimed an unusually low number of intimate encounters, but that didn't hinder his fascination with the leading ladies who graced his films. Behind the scenes, tales of Hitchcock's controlling nature emerged, with stars like Grace Kelly and Janet Lee recounting experiences of being tightly managed on and off set. However, it was Tippi Hedren who found herself at the center of Hitchcock's obsession. Riding high on the success of Psycho, Hitchcock handpicked the relatively unknown actress to star in The Birds. While the film catapulted Hedren to stardom, she found herself ensnared in a contractual web that left her vulnerable to the director's whims. On the set of The Birds, Hitchcock's peculiarities took a dark turn. He instructed the cast not to engage with or touch Hedren, simultaneously feeding her misinformation that they disliked her. Hitchcock's advances toward her were met with rejection, leading to what Hedren claims as a vengeful turn in the filming process. Scenes meant to feature mechanical crows that took a nightmarish twist as live birds, attached to her by elastic, viciously attacked her. One particularly grueling scene involving real birds attacking her in a bedroom took a painstaking five days to capture. The breaking point came when Hedron, offended by Hitchcock's advances, reportedly called him a fat pig. In retaliation, Hitchcock allegedly set out to ruin her career. He refused to work with her again, but also barred her from collaborating with other directors. Despite winning an award for her work in The Birds, Hitchcock denied her the time to collect it and allegedly sabotaged her chances of an Oscar nomination. While Hedron managed to continue her career, the shadow of Hitchcock's influence loomed large, and her trajectory in Hollywood never fully recovered. Number 4. Spade Cooley Got Rid of His Wife Spade Cooley, the self-proclaimed king of Western swing, enjoyed a prosperous career with a television show, movie contracts, and hit records. However, behind the glitz and glamour, a darker tale unfolded. In 1961, Cooley's fame took a tragic turn when he brutally murdered his wife, Ella May, in a fit of paranoia and rage, all witnessed by their daughter. As Cooley's celebrity status soared, so did his paranoia and impulsiveness. The stress of contractual obligations and financial mismanagement heightened his temper, creating a volatile environment. Convinced that his wife was having an affair, Cooley unleashed a prolonged and brutal assault on her, leading to her loss of consciousness and ultimately her death. The ensuing trial became a media spectacle, with fans queuing for hours to witness the courtroom drama. Cooley was found guilty, and despite efforts by his celebrity friends to secure a pardon from California Governor Ronald Reagan, he was convicted. In a surprising turn, Reagan did grant a pardon in 1969, but tragically, Cooley passed away from a heart attack that same year before learning of his impending clemency. Number 3. The Forgotten Tragedy of Ted Healy In the annals of Hollywood, the name Ted Healy might be overshadowed by the success of The Three Stooges, a comedy act he created. Yet, history holds a darker tale for Healy, who met an untimely end after a brutal beating outside a Hollywood club, a tragic footnote obscured by the fame of his former collaborators. Healy, a vaudevillian, brought the Three Stooges together as sidekicks for his comedy act. However, by 1934, the group parted ways, and the Stooges went on to achieve fame and fortune independently. Healy's life took a somber turn, marked by heavy drinking and personal struggles. In December 1937, after reportedly celebrating the birth of his first child, Healy found himself embroiled in a violent altercation outside the Trocadero Club in Hollywood. Conflicting accounts of the night's events, ranging from December 19th to December 21st, make it challenging to discern the truth. Some suggest studio involvement, with Eddie Mannix allegedly helping clean up the scene. Various reports point fingers at Healy's assailants, including future James Bond producer Chubby Broccoli, mobster Pat DiCiccio, and actor Wallace Beery. However, an autopsy surprisingly attributed Healy's death to alcoholism rather than the reported fight, adding layers of mystery to the tragedy. Number 2. The Tragic Tale of Fatty Arbuckle In the silent era of Hollywood, Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle stood as a major star, even securing a staggering $3 million three-year contract with Paramount before 1920. However, his name became synonymous not only with fame, but also with one of the darkest scandals of early Hollywood. 
The incident unfolded when Arbuckle was accused of murder after a party he hosted with friends. The victim, Virginia Rapp, a small-time actress, attended the gathering. Found unconscious, the hotel doctor initially attributed her condition to excessive drinking and sent her home. Shockingly, two days later, Rapp was hospitalized and succumbed to peritonitis from a ruptured bladder. The accusation against Arbuckle was severe. He was accused of rape, which supposedly led to the fatal injury. The trial became a sensational spectacle, marked by questionable evidence and dubious testimonies. For instance, someone claimed to have seen Arbuckle smiling after the alleged rape, treated as damning evidence. Additionally, a hospital nurse, despite a lack of supporting medical findings, confidently asserted that Arbuckle was the culprit. The trial resulted in a hung verdict, prompting a retrial. As the legal battle continued, Arbuckle's defense aggressively scrutinized witnesses and evidence. In a swift turn of events, the jury returned an innocent verdict in just six minutes, five of which were spent writing it up. Despite his legal vindication, Arbuckle's career lay shattered, and he became a tragic figure in Hollywood history. Number 1. Shirley Temple Played a Prostitute In 1932, Temple began her Hollywood career at the age of three. Soon afterwards, she began acting in a series of comedic shorts called Baby Burlesques. The shorts sought to parody current events and popular films. However, they often came across as creepy rather than funny. In the short Polly Ticks in Washington Temple, then four years old, played a prostitute sent to entertain a senator, which is also played by a child. Draped in pearls and wearing a small bra, Temple is portrayed as enticing the senator with a series of seductive moves. In another short called War Babies, Temple again plays a prostitute trying to seduce men in the army, which is played by boys. Dancing seductively, exchanging kisses for lollipops, and referring to herself as expensive, the young actress engaged in a performance well, well beyond her years. To make matters worse, Temple and the other child actors were severely punished on set for not following the rules. To threaten and punish uncooperative child actors, the director, Charles Lamont, kept a soundproof black box six feet on each side, containing a block of ice, explained historian John Cassan. An offending child was locked within this dark, cramped interior and either stood uncomfortably in the cold, humid air, or had to sit on the ice. In spite of the fact that baby burlesques helped Shirley Temple get her start in Hollywood, she viewed them as Hollywood scandals. In a later interview, Shirley Temple described the shorts as a cynical exploitation of our childish innocence. And there you have it, guys, the hidden scandals of old Hollywood that they hoped you'd never know. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more juicy insights into the glitzy and not so glamorous side of Hollywood's past. Did we miss any scandal that you think deserves a spotlight? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, make sure to ring that notification bell so you never miss out on the drama. Thanks for watching.